The South Bankshire meets Faye Weldon in 20 minutes. First on Anglia, the news. Huge win for Chirac as French reject far right. Tory MP sacked in row over racist joke. And it's back to earth for the millionaire space tourist. ITV Weekend News with Andrea Capital. Good evening. France united today and produced a massive rejection of the country's extreme right and its presidential candidate, Jean-Marie Le Pen. On a huge turnout, 82% of voters from across the political spectrum rallied around his rival, President Jacques Chirac. Tonight, Chirac claimed the results meant that France remained true to its ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity. But he said calls for reform would be heard. From Paris, Juliette Bremner has the latest. Hailed as a victory for democracy, this was in reality a solid rejection of Jean-Marie Le Pen rather than a ringing endorsement of Jacques Chirac. But still, Paris rejoiced relieved they voted decisively against the extreme politics of the National Front. After winning more than 80% of the vote, Chirac acknowledged his debt to all sections of French society, particularly the socialists who put aside their principles to support him. Je salue la France qui... He thanked the French people, saying when they'd found themselves in a difficult position, they'd rediscovered France's true values. The startling success of Le Pen in the first round seemed to shake the electorate out of its apathy. The turnout rose dramatically today, 8 out of 10 registering a vote. But some socialists demonstrated how difficult it had been, symbolically choosing to be disinfected before endorsing Chirac. Normally, I, I would like to pay to vote for uh, Jospin. So in this case, I voted for Chirac because there is no other choice. <laughs> well, I think it's fantastic. It really is very good that we finally have Chirac. We just really had to stop Le Pen. Le résultat que j'ai obtenu est également remarquable. But Le Pen called his 17% share of the vote remarkable, promising to make further gains in next month's parliamentary elections. The Chirac camp can afford to celebrate tonight after an emphatic victory that allows them to say with some credibility that they saw off the far right. But the new president knows this is only the first hurdle. He has much work to do if he is to stop the extremist taking centre stage. Juliet Bremner, ITV News, Paris. Here, the husband of Conservative MP Anne Winterton hit out tonight after she was sacked from her job in the party for telling a racist joke. Nicholas Winterton, who's also an MP, insisted neither of them were racist. But the Tory leader, Ian Duncan Smith, called the joke unacceptable and offensive. Here's Adrian Britton. His wife sacked from the shadow cabinet, Nicholas Winterton, also a Tory MP, responded angrily to reporters when asked if he condemned his wife's joke as racist. Would you condemn your wife? Would you condemn your wife? I would condemn that joke, sir. Look, would you condemn your wife? I'm asking you whether you condemn I will not condemn my wife. But you don't condemn I will not condemn my wife. And I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a pity that you've come uh, to pose questions as you have. The rest of the press here have dealt with the matter, I believe, in a response. Am I a racist? No. Is my wife a racist? No. If she offended anybody, she has apologised. But Anne Winterton's unreserved apology was not enough at a time of heightened sensitivity over racial issues. At a rugby club dinner at Congleton Town Hall, she said Asians in Britain were ten a penny. The Tory leader decided she had to go. Because when I looked at those remarks and discussed them with Anne Winterton, I believed that they were offensive, and I believe they're offensive to a large number of people. And on that basis, I believe that my party uh, is not offensive and cannot be seen to be so, and therefore, from a member of the Shadow Cabinet, I thought that was unacceptable. Ian Duncan Smith had no choice but to sack Anne Winterton. If he hadn't acted swiftly, his party would have been accused of tolerating racism and been dragged back to the old days of politics when a minister refused to resign, 
damaged the party in a long-running saga and then eventually was forced out. Adrian Britton, ITV News, a Conservative Central Office. The parents of missing schoolgirl Amanda or Millie Dyler have released more pictures of their daughter in a fresh appeal for witnesses. They again begged anyone with information about Millie to come forward, saying the uncertainty was like living in hell. Police say they've received a good response after a reward was offered for clues. British troops in Afghanistan have swept further into the country's eastern mountains in the hunt for al-Qaeda and Taliban forces. They've searched new areas and hideouts, but there's still no sign of the enemy. Many soldiers seem frustrated. One said he'd seen more action during training. From Afghanistan, Julian Mannion reports. For days, RAF Chinook helicopters have been ferrying supplies to the Royal Marines mounting Operation Snipe. Today, I was among the first journalists flown to the area where it's happening in eastern Afghanistan. Our destination was a small plateau, 10,000 feet up amid the towering peaks. Here, the Marines have placed their battery of 605 millimeter howitzers, which will provide fire support for the troops if they encounter the enemy. But so far, the Marines who are hunting for Al-Qaeda have made no contact, and the gun crews have fired not a single shell in anger. We're more active during training, believe it or not. Yeah, so guys are a little bit anxious to get on with things. Where do you think they actually are, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda? Uh, probably somewhere in Pakistan. They're certainly not around here. The guns are ready, but so far the call has not come. The result for the gunners is days of waiting. And for their commanders in charge of Operation Snipe, a niggling question mark over whether it will achieve its aims. But Brigadier Roger Lane, who leads the British task force, believes that the enemy's unwillingness to stand and fight proves that coalition forces have them on the run. Uh, what I'm doing now is to deny them the opportunities of being able to go back and establishing a base again from which they can then train terrorists to then go and wreak havoc around the world. That's how I describe it as a success. The Marines will soon be advancing to take control of two mountain peaks where enemy forces may still be hiding. There may yet be a fight before Snipe is over. Julian Mannion, ITV News in eastern Afghanistan. Football now, and there haven't been any big celebrations for the FA Cup winners Arsenal today. Instead, they're taking things easy ahead of their crucial Premiership title clash with Manchester United this week. By contrast, yesterday's losers, Chelsea, have been much in evidence. They've toured the streets of West London to pay tribute to their loyal fans. Finally, space tourist Mark Shuttleworth came back down to earth today after one of the most expensive holidays ever. He paid £14 million to visit the International Space Station. After touchdown, Shuttleworth said every second of the trip would be with him forever. From Moscow, Neil Connery reports. Time to say goodbye 240 miles above the Earth's surface. Final hugs for Mark Shuttleworth on the front right. In the early hours of Sunday morning, the world's second space tourist prepared to head home from the International Space Station along with Roberto Vittori and Yuri Gudzenko. The three headed into their Soyuz TM-33 capsule, ready to be released as they passed over China. During their descent, they plunged to Earth at ten times the speed of sound, the outer wall reaching 18,000 degrees Celsius. And from a blue Kazakhstan sky, with a parachute to slow their fall, they were back on solid ground. Shuttleworth, an internet entrepreneur who lives in London, paid £14 million to join the eight-day mission. After a warm welcome from his father, he spoke of his experience in space. Every second will be imprinted and be with me for uh, the rest of my life. <laughs> All three have now been flown to Star City outside Moscow for medical checks. Mark Shuttleworth and his crewmates are now recovering after their space odyssey. Shuttleworth is adamant that his £14 million was money well spent. There's relief too for the mission's organisers, pleased they've been able to balance the needs of science and business. Neil Connery, ITV News at Russia's Star City. Well, that's all from the ITV newsroom. From me and everyone here, have a very good night.
PowerGen, controlling energy for homes and business. Good evening, Scotland and Northern Ireland, the place to be. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine elsewhere, a lot of cloud with some patchy rain around. And that's certainly the picture right now because cloud's been increasing all through the day across the eastern counties of England. And now that cloud is thick enough to produce some outbreaks of rain. Rather wet to end the night here, some heavy bursts of rain spilling across England and Wales. To the north and west, though, Scotland and Northern Ireland, clear and cold, a touch of ground frost. But it will be a bright, sunny start to the day here, and that's the way it should stay throughout the day. For England and Wales, a lot of cloud will still have dribs and drabs of rain and drizzle around, mist up over the high ground too. I think improvements will be slow. We'll see some brightness perhaps for southern counties of England, but a lot of cloud generally, and still rather damp, especially over on the eastern side of the Pennines. That's going to make a big, big difference to the temperatures. The best of the temperatures, certainly for Scotland and Northern Ireland, rocketing up to 18 to 20 degrees, for example, in Malague in western Scotland. Contrast that with eastern parts where 10 degrees is probably the best we can expect, for example, in Great Yarmouth with all that cloud around and a breeze coming in off that chilly North Sea. That's it. Good night. PowerGen, controlling energy for homes and business. The people here are waking up to a new era. I'll never forget that day, going into Kabul for the first time with the Northern Line, the day they liberated the city. Now it's nearly six months on, and I'm going back to see how life has changed for the people and how the British troops are coping. GMTV this week. Hello, it's rather cloudy tonight with outbreaks of rain around. Generally, it's pretty light, but the odd heavier burst is possible, especially towards the south of the region. And still quite windy, but this is keeping temperatures mild. They're falling no lower than around 6 or 7 Celsius. So a bit of a dull, damp start to Bank Holiday Monday. Spells of drizzly rain from time to time too, along with a chilly wind. That rain will gradually peter out during the afternoon. Many places becoming dry later. Maybe the odd bright spell that will remain mainly cloudy. Just a very few bright spells coming along in places. A chilly day, though, is highs rising to around 13 Celsius, that's 55 Fahrenheit, with that brisk wind continue to blow, making it feel slightly cooler. Well, it'll be coming generally dry by Tuesday. Still a cloudy, though, with a few passing showers in places. Highs again, 13 or 14 Celsius in a brisk northeasterly wind. So look at the summary then. A dull, damp and chilly start tomorrow, but becoming drier and brighter later. Good night.